Welcome back. This is lesson one, part two. In lesson one, part one, we found how to take the derivative of a function at any point using the limit formula or the formal definition of derivative. Uh, what we did in the last lesson, um, we found a formula and then you can find the derivative at any point simply by substituting in a value for x. In this video, we're going to look at finding the limit at a particular point um, called A. And when we want to find it at a particular point, we use this formula. Once again, notice this looks very closely to the formula of slope. So we're going to start off with this first problem. Now, what I need you to recall from Algebra 1 or from Math 1 is the equation um, of a line. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This formula is used quite often in calculus. It's the point-slope formula. And it's used quite often in calculus. So you want to make sure that you know this formula. So we're going to start here. So in, in order to use this formula, we need a point and we need a slope, hence the name point-slope formula. So in this equation, we have a point. Our point is negative 1, 5. We need a slope. Now, of course, I can look at this equation and tell the slope of this line. The, sl the slope is negative 2. I know that from an algebra perspective, but let's do it using calculus. So recall the formula is the limit. So you thought you had me there. You thought I was going to forget to write the limit. So. It is f prime of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And in this example, our a value is negative 1 because our a value is our x value. So f prime of negative 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 f of x is just the function itself minus f of a. So to determine f of a, I substitute this into the original function and I get um, 3 plus 2, 5. So f of a is 5 all over negative, I'm sorry, x minus negative 1. Simplifying this, I get f prime of negative 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, so that's going to be negative 2x minus 2 over x plus 1. Factoring out a negative 2, I get negative 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. Well, what happens to that x plus 1? You got it. They cancel each other out. And so the limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative 2 is simply negative 2. So I have found my slope, which we knew from the beginning. But I just wanted to do it using calculus. Now to write the equation of the line, I get y minus y1. So y1 in this case is 5 is equal to m times x minus x1. Now, in this class, your teacher did a very good job of, of showing you um, drilling in slope intercept form. But in this class, it is OK. It is preferable to leave your answer in this form. The only way, is the only way you want to simplify this is multiple choice. But if it's free response, we want to just leave our answer exactly like this. But I am going to simplify because I want to show you that you're going to end up back where we started because simply because this is linear. Adding 5 to both sides, I get negative 2x uh, plus 3. And that's exactly what we started with. And that only works because it's linear. That's not always the case, OK, as we will see in the next problem. OK, so this time, a is negative 2 because a is the x value. So to find f prime of 2, uh, f prime of t, sorry, I said it right the first time. To find f prime of negative 2, I'll get it right in a minute, we do the limit as x approaches negative 2 
of f of t, in this case f of t is t squared plus 3, minus f of negative 2, so f of negative 2 is 4 plus 3, 7, all over x minus negative 2. So that will give me the limit as x approaches negative 2. 3 minus 7 is 4, so I have t squared minus 4 over x plus 2. And of course, if I do a direct substitution, I get 0 over 0. That should be a t, sorry. Those x's should all be t's, sorry. All of them are t's. Every single one of them, sorry. Okay. So if I do a direct substitution, uh, if I substitute a negative 2 for t, I get 0 minus 0, but I can do a handy dandy factoring. And I get t plus 2, t minus 2, all over t plus 2. They cancel. So then I have the limit as t approaches negative 2 of t minus 2, which is equal to, doing direct substitution, negative 2 minus 2, negative 4. So the slope at negative 2, when t is negative 2, the slope is negative 4. That's what we just found. We found that f prime, the slope at negative 2 is negative 4. Now we want to write the equation of the line. So to write the equation of the line, we go back to this formula. So we have y minus y1, which in this case is 7, is equal to m, because slope and derivative are the same thing, x minus 2, x minus negative 2. And again, we can just leave our answer just like that. Sweet. And this is the equation of the tangent line at negative 2. So if I were to graph this expression, so t squared plus 3 looks something like this. And I am finding the tangent line at negative 2, so negative 2, so here. And if you can see that slope for that tangent line would be negative, do you see that? Okay. And so the equation of this line, this tangent line, is y minus 7 is equal to negative 4x plus 2. That's what we just found. Okay, so the last part of this video, we're going to look at how to sketch the derivative of a function. What I want you to remember is that the derivative is the same as what? You got it, slope. Derivative is the same as slope. So what we're doing is we're kind of estimating what does the slope look like in each situation. So I'm going to give you an example. This is a regular parabola. Up until this point, up until the vertex, notice my slopes are negative. Because my slopes are negative because that graph is decreasing. And so my slopes are negative. So if I were to graph what this would look like, what the slopes would look like, I would have to graph negative values of y. Okay? At this point, my slope goes from uh, negative to positive. And the only way to go from negative to positive, I have to go through 0. So right here. So up until this point, my slopes are negative. Then when I get to this point, my slope becomes positive, and it's going to look something like this. Okay? So where my slopes go from negative to positive, I ha by the intermediate value theorem, I have to go through 0. And so I go through 0 here. So that's where you want to start. You want to start by determining where the derivative is 0. And then you want to kind of sketch positive slopes. Positive slopes are going to have positive y values. Negative slopes are going to have negative y values. Pay attention to when your slopes are becoming more positive and less positive. So, for instance, if I were to look at 1 over x, 
my slopes are really um, increasing quickly here. All of my slopes are negative because this is a decreasing function. And my slopes are increasing quickly here, but then they start to level off. They never reach zero, but they kind of start to level off. So I would like to show it like that. It never quite reaches zero, but they start leveling off at that point. Um, we're not going to talk of non-differentiability where it has a sharp turn or a corner, sort of like the absolute value symbol or um, we would call that a little cusp. We'd call this a corner. And at these points, the function is not differentiable because there's not a smooth transition between going from uh, negative to positive. So we call this a corner or a cusp, and there's non-differentiable here. The derivative does not exist. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. Okay? So let's get started. The first thing we notice about this is that it's a line. And if it's a line, if it's linear, then we can find the slope. So this slope looks to be about 1. It rose 1, it ran 1. Remember, slope is the change in y of the change in x. So this looks like it has a slope of 1, probably a little less, but a slope of 1. So, and it's a constant. This slope, if I go anywhere in this line, the slope is 1. So if I were just to graph this slope, it would look sort of like this, because there's just 1. And it's a constant. We did a parabola a minute ago. So when we have something like this, we want to look to see where are, is the derivative 0. Here my slopes are negative, and then they become positive. So in order to go from negative to positive, I had to go through 0. So my slopes are negative, and then they go positive. As you learn more about the shortcuts, it's going to make graphing these a little bit easier because when we learn more, we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x. So I know its derivative is linear. All right, let's do a couple more examples. This is a neat one. Um, this looks like the, an inverse. This looks like the sine function. And so we know that the derivatives were negative because the, the function is decreasing, and then the derivative went positive, so it had to go through zero. And then here, the derivatives are positive, and then they go negative, so it has to go through zero by the intermediate value theorem. Here, the derivatives are negative. They started off positive on this side, so positive and then negative, so it had to go through zero, so I have zeros here and here. Now here, my derivatives are positive. And then they go to zero. So my derivatives are sort of positive and then go to zero. Now from here to here, my derivatives, if I were to graph a tangent line, I would see that the slope of those lines would be negative. So it's negative. I show that by going below the x-axis, but I have to go back to the zero because at this point it was zero again. Now you may be asking yourself, well, how do I know how far to go? At this moment, don't worry about that. Okay, I just want you to kind of, what is the general shape of it? So I would accept any of this. If you had brought it down and kind of went like this, I would accept it um, at this point. Now we're going to learn some more things that uh, give us a little bit more definition of this graph, but at this point we're just kind of sketching. Okay, so it went to zero, and then from this point to this point my slopes are positive, but I know i got to go back to zero. So I know that at some point, and again, I will also tell you where to turn it. We're going to learn how to tell where it turns also. So then it went positive, and then at this point, it goes negative. This function is always increasing. So this function will always be, this function will always be, in the um, first and the second quadrant. Its derivative will be in the first and the second quadrant because it is always a positive slope. Notice at these points how my slopes are very close to zero, and then they begin to increase, okay? But they're very close to zero, and then, oops, I can't draw a straight line, so you have to forgive me. So they're close to zero, 
and then it starts to increase, and it continues to increase. So the derivative actually looks like the original function. Interesting. Okay, this is an absolute value, and what do we know about absolute value? Absolute value consists of two linear functions. And at this point, this is what we call a corner. And at this corner, it is not differentiable. Because in order for it to be differentiable, and we'll talk about this later, the left-hand derivative has to equal to the right-hand derivative. And we can see that that's not the case. When it's a smooth like this, it kind of, you can sort of see that the derivatives are decreasing as we come to this point. But not here, because this is linear, your derivative is always this negative value. Um, and I'm going to call it negative, uh, let's see, that's one point. Uh, it looks like it's about negative one. So my derivative is a constant negative one from this point backwards. So I'm going to sketch this as an open circle, and then, I'm sorry, it's negative 1. So I'll have an open circle here, and then its value is about negative 1. It's a constant. Then from this point forward, it's about positive 1. So just to keep my scale, 1, 2, it's about one, two and a half, sort of like that. I'm going to do an open circle here, and then it's positive one throughout. And it's not differentiable on this corner. Okay? Now, I know that's a lot for you to digest, but I want you to try these three. Just try them. Um, pause, and then I'll come back with the answers. Okay, so the answers are in green. Notice that we should have known that the derivative was zero at this point. We've done several parabolas. So to the left, uh, we see our, our derivatives are negative. So my values are um, below the axis, below the x-axis. And then at this point, my derivatives become positive, And so it's above the x-axis. In this graph, it's zero twice. It turns twice. And so I mark my zeros on the x-axis. From this point to this point, it's positive, so my, my green values are positive. Um, between the two, the max and the min, it went to negative, and then it came back to positive. This one probably was a little bit more difficult to do. It was sort of like the one that we just did. What we notice is that because this graph is always increasing, that our values are going to be in the y in the first quadrant. And because it's increasing quickly, and then notice that how our graph sort of levels off. So there's not a big change in um, the slope here. It's a slight change, but not a big change, and that's why it's kind of approaching zero, because there's very little change in our y values. Okay? So that will do it for lesson one. Um, there's some practice that you can do in the Lawson textbook 2.1, numbers uh, 5 through 23. You want to do the odd and 37 through 40. You want to do all of those. So you have a great day, and I'll see you with lesson three, lesson two.